Hey, this story is just one part of the Stories with Sapphire podcast. If you want to hear the full episode in its intended context, the link is in the description below. It's story time. Chapter 3 The Smoke Man by Jake I am here to tell you about something that occurred when I was five and still absolutely terrifies me. So my family is extremely religious, Christian to be more exact, but they don't believe in spirits or ghosts. Although I would not consider myself a Christian since I guess I just never understood the whole religion and all, but I believe there is a God and that heaven, hell, and All of that is real. There's definitely something out there. As a child, and even now, I have always been sensitive to the paranormal and such. Not like insanely gifted like others, but still, quite sensitive. It's like I can feel the energies around me and see things others cannot. The first time I discovered this was when I was three. I had walked into my room, and there sitting on my bed, was an angel with flowing golden hair and a sword which seemed to be forged out of light hanging at his side. He was absolutely beautiful, but whenever I tried to get my mother to see, he disappeared. I'm not sure why he was there, whether he was protecting me or something, but he was there. I would see other things like that, but... Due to me being a young child, no one would ever believe me. So I would stop believing I was truly seeing these things. I just ignored them. Until the fateful day which changed my life, and still affects me today. Growing up, my family had always been very close with my cousins. Although they lived a state away in North Carolina, we were still always close. When I was about five, we were called up by my uncle to see their new house and visit them. I wasn't in school yet, and my brother was still young, so my parents agreed to come. I was overjoyed to see my cousins and couldn't wait to play with them. So all through the day, we explored the new house and played together, only taking a break for a few snacks, lunch, and dinner before bedtime. It was just before lunchtime, and we were playing hide-and-seek. We were still looking for the last person hiding, my older cousin, Jen, and me and my two other cousins grouped up to find her. While on our search, we heard shuffling coming from inside a closet. We all silently smirked at each other, thinking it had to be Jen. So I slowly turned the knob, and we all giggled, expecting to find Jen. It was hard to see inside the closet, so I pulled the door open further, and a little bit of light spilled into it. That was when I first saw him. Or maybe it? I really don't know. But a powerful, masculine energy emitted off of him. I stared in horror, grabbing my cousin's hands. I asked if they saw it, and they nodded, frozen and on the verge of tears. He was tall and completely made of what looked like black smoke. Although there were no visible eyes, Such a hatred was pouring out from him, and all feelings of happiness and hope were drained into this black void of that creature or man. He seemed so sinister, and despite only being a child, I still knew he was pure evil. While we were only there for a few seconds before screaming and crying, running to our parents, it felt like hours being there with what I will call him. My mother asked what was wrong. We said, there was a man in the closet. My uncle and father both grabbed a nearby heavy object in case they had to knock out what they believed to be a home invader. They went over to the closet and braced themselves. But when they looked inside no one was there. All that remained was a musty smell and a simple 
empty closet. Jen came out from her hiding spot in another room, thrilled that no one had found her. She saw us all gathered around the empty closet and asked what was wrong. My aunt said that us children claimed we saw a man in the closet. Jen giggled and joked that he was going to get us, trying to scare us. It worked, of course. Our parents reassured us we were safe and scolded Jen. They told us it was a new and unfamiliar home and a dark closet, that we had only thought we'd seen a man and that everything was okay. Later that evening, I talked to my cousins about the man some more. Finally, someone other than me had seen something. After seeing him that first time, I had caught glances of him in the corners of my eyes around the house. It was only quick glances, and whenever I saw him, I yelled, It's the smoke man! And me and my two other cousins would scream, running through the house. My older cousins and parents would only laugh, believing we were joking around, but I wasn't. Although I saw him frequently, I feel like God protected us from him. He never got too close, and we never saw him for long amounts of time. The feeling of his desire to hurt us was so incredible, yet something was stopping him. It was like there was a wall between our families and him in which he could not pass through. All he could do was watch and I am completely content with that over his insidious intentions. To be honest, the entire time, even though I was young, I knew the creature's intentions. He wanted me and everyone that was in that house dead. But it wasn't a simple die-in-your-sleep death without any pain, but a torturous, painful death. Although, I believe since I saw him first, he wanted me to suffer the most. In fact, being older now and understanding more, I believe he wanted our souls. It was just terrifying even being in this creature's presence since the amount of hatred was just so overwhelming. Some time later, I had to say goodbye to my cousins and leave for home. We had been up for a week already, and my mother was tired from all the social interaction and having to take care of my younger brother, who only was a toddler at the time. After leaving that house, I never saw the smoke man again, thank God. But seeing him the first time led me to see other beings like him. He opened a gateway to see other things which I never wished to see, and now cannot unsee whether it be negative energies, the occasional entities which I see when I'm around certain places, or even some entities oppressing or latched onto others. And recently, there's an entity that keeps appearing in my dreams and causing me to sleepwalk. I'll find myself in random rooms and last night, outside my house. This entity is testing its limits, even appearing in my waking life, hiding in the shadows and watching me. Some might consider this ability a gift, but I would easily get rid of it if I could. It's like they know I can see them, and they like that. Some have even tried to harm me, but I swear that angel is keeping me safe. I don't know what the smoke man was or how he got into that house. I do know he was malevolent and he did not like us there. He left a touch of darkness in all of us. I have gone back and forth so many times on whether or not I believe that spirits can be inherently good or evil. For the most part, I want to believe spirits are neutral, and then we assign a value based on the surrounding circumstances. Like how we don't view a devastating thunderstorm as evil, it is a natural event. The tragedy comes from the storm's effect on our lives. And then I hear stories like this, where the person so undoubtedly feels pure hatred emanating from the entity. And then I don't know what to believe. And then I think, there's no way that all spirits are simply neutral. 
We often forget that we are sharing a space with many unseen forces. And just as we would threaten or chase away any living beings who break into our homes, these spirits are protecting themselves as well. To them, we are the enemy. I think Jake might have been assigned this guardian because he is going to be challenged by many more horrifying things. So Jake, whatever you're doing to keep the smoke man away, it's working. Continue to show gratitude and respect to your guardian every day because not everyone is as lucky. Thank you for joining me today. If you like what you heard and would like to support this independently run show, consider becoming a member of my Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash stories with Sapphire to see the different tiers and perks. If you'd like to submit a story, email me at storieswithsapphire at gmail.com. Salamat and good night. Mm-hmm.